Let's see if it works. It's charging. Hey there, Internet Keith here, and welcome to the Cars and Keith YouTube channel. And in this video, I am very excited to showcase a product for a friend of mine, something that he has created to make your BMW interior on your F3X and F8X 3 and 4 series more functional and enjoyable. So JD Cars has come up with the Lightning Console. Really cool packaging right here. I kind of ripped it up a little bit. It's kind of my fault. Say goodbye to your phone cord. Say hello to your phone's new best friend. And what it is, is an entire new front cup holder console with a built-in wireless charger. Very good quality plastic on par with what's already on the BMW. You have uh, your rubber mat here for your wireless charging. It fits my iPhone Pro 13 Max, no problem. You have all the connectors and everything you need. This is a plug and play solution. On the interior of most BMWs that there's nowhere to put the phone without it flying all over the place. This solves that and also allows you to retain your original cigarette lighter at the same time. It's a really great product, small business, JD Cars even has it here on the bottom. Now for a full compatibility list of cars, go to the website, I'll have a link in the description below. Actually right here I don't have it up yet, but I should either have a discount code or a link to his website as well, my affiliate code. This is pretty dang cool. Let's get to the install. So the wash bay isn't finished yet, but I cleared enough room to be able to fit the car in here so I can work on it in the AC. Uh, part of the ceiling is not done yet, obviously the floor is not done yet, but we can fit her in here. They have thought of everything when it comes to this install. They give you all the tools that you need in this nice little bag right here. Let's see what's inside. So you have a T20 screwdriver. This is the only uh, screw size that you're gonna need. So we have four different types of angled picks, straight picks. We also have a nice trim pry tool, very high quality plastic. It's not really bendy. So they sent us a JD Cars key tag. We got a JDC sticker. I oh, want the adapter right here. This is very important for you LCI guys. The cigarette lighter is slightly different. This is an adapter ring that you can pop in there, a barcode to the instructions. But if you're here, you're already getting them. So anytime we're working on electronics, especially on a BMW, you always want to disconnect the battery. So in the back here, just a little turn the little switch. Just fold all the way out. Trusty 10 millimeter socket. A really good idea is to put a microfiber on top of the battery and then lay the terminal on top of that so that way it doesn't touch anything. Just set it there so you know it's not going to hit anything. Also another good idea is to feed a microfiber through this little hook right here to keep the trunk from closing. Basically just makes it from to where it doesn't latch completely. So if you have no electronics, you can't pop the trunk. But if you have these right here for your rear seats, go ahead and hook them. So that way you can get in through there. So here's our console area. This is my 2015 335 M Sport. So it has the upgraded honeycomb metal style uh, trim right here. This is a good time to clean things up. There's a lot of dust and crap that gets stuck in these buttons. You'll be able to get this out and then some pieces and clean it up really nice. Put it back in, maybe get some dirt that's underneath here. First thing you wanna do is lift up your middle console because that overlaps this trim. That gives you a little more room here. So take your trim tool, start at the front. There's two clips up here and there's, I think there's two or three of them back here. But you're just gonna to wanna to work your way under and they're just gonna pop off pretty easily. Not too fast because there is a wire connecting the iDrive knob. There we go. Pretty easy stuff. So if there's blue wire right here connecting to your iDrive, you can take your pry tool or you can take one of the picks. If you push enough to reach down as you're pushing in, that kind of frees up the little piece there and pops it right out. Now for the trim around the shifter. I've actually found a pretty easy way right here. If you go up about an inch away from this back corner, if you just feed, it's a pretty flimsy area, and you see how it just, pry tool just goes right in there and just pops that right out. Pretty easy stuff. Always be careful because these are plastic. 
Dang, I am so embarrassed at how dirty this is. The good thing is, is almost all of this is being replaced. Right here, there's actually two tabs on each side. There's multiple ways of doing this. There's, you could just take your finger and wrap it around and you can try to feel for that clip and put a little stress here and pop it out. But my finger is not made for that. My knuckle hits really hard right there. So for me to find the easiest way is with this pick right here. It's kind of like a 30 degree angle pick. About halfway back on this edge between that parking sensor button and this back trim if you don't have one. It's like an inch off the edge here. You can kind of work your tool in and you'll feel like a little concave area. And there's a little pin down in there and if you take your pick tool and turn it right, you'll get, and I'll see if I can leave the pick tool right on it, but I've already got it popped out. Once you pop it out, it'll pull out like that. But basically we're working our way in right here with this tool and we're basically just forcing ourselves in which is pushing this pin and allowing this to come loose once it's loose you don't have to pry the other one so now that you already have your pick tool out you can use it to push this pin in right here for this connector get the stress off of it and then that way you'll be able to pull it from the opposite side and that way you have this piece free now you have exposed your two t20 screws one right here and there's one right here Cup holder's a good spot. Just remember, don't throw this cup holder away before you get your screws back. So not all of these are the exact same. You know, there's ones with a little tray that pulls over the cup holders. People really like that, and they don't want to get rid of that. But I want the wireless charging. I don't, I don't need coin storage. I don't do coins. So to pull this out, there's hooks in the back here. There's four of them or so, and there's about six metal clips. Best place to start is back here in the back. That gets you to leverage to lift up so that way those hooks in front will come out of their seated position. So we'll just start to pull. Don't get too crazy with it. These are metal clips though. They're pretty strong. There we go. Now we're just pulling up. There we go. Popped right out. Now there's a connector right here. It's just two push pins. Pull that out. That'll give you a little room to kind of work at this to get to the back side of this connector here. Use our pick tool, get that out. And our whole assembly is out. Now we have that out, I'm just kind of turning it around. So that way this open area goes over shift knob and gives me a good working surface right here. Now you're gonna need your pry tool because there's six metal connectors all around and you need to take those off because we're gonna transfer those over to the other unit. So these clips can be a little tricky they're kind of dug in with little uh, hooks on this metal. So I'll just use your pry tool. Start prying them off. Once you get them off a good bit, you'll be able to fit your pick in here and then work our cells off. Just like that, you can see all these serrated edges and that's how it's cutting in there. Gives you an idea of how you're going to have to pry that off. And then we got to do five more. Next, we take care of the T20 right here for the key proximity sensor. Now, if you don't have the proximity key, uh, you wouldn't have this, so you wouldn't even have to worry about it. We have our wire connector right here that we need to remove. That is for the cigarette lighter. We're gonna need to transfer this as well. It's just a little pin right here that it would just push on this one side and just goes down. I'll wiggle these wires out right here. And now on to the cigarette lighter. So at times, I think this could be the most difficult part. I really think it depends on what kind of console you have. Like mine has this little flip tray right here so it doesn't go out very far so when you try to pull out the cigarette lighter it's less room and it always wants to close on you and that keeps you from being able to push the cigarette lighter out so i put the hole over the shift knob here i'm using the side here to keep it pried open now there's plastic tabs on each side of this they're a real pain in the butt uh, but the best thing to do is just to put a lot of pressure on the back of the cigarette lighter and then just get those pins worked loose switch hands if you need to there we go. That is the most painful part out of this entire thing. And your cigarette lighter will come through that opening right there. One more thing to try to get out is your little rubber bottoms here of your cup holder. We're gonna see if they transfer over, if not. Mine are pretty uh, syrup cemented in there <laughs> uh, from spilt Cokes from previous owner and probably myself and my kids. So I'll try to pry those out. Oh. Let's go on that side. Oh, no, 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 that's nasty. But that'll give us a chance to clean them. There's the other nasty one. 
So all I'm losing is this little bitty storage area right here with this little cover. You could set things on there, but it's not big enough for a phone. This isn't big enough for much of anything. These back to back and see the difference in the cup holder size. Actually, they're pretty close to the same. Um, they're cut differently. Obviously, there's different thicknesses here. And actually, I think I've lost a little weight here as well. So there's a bunch of wires right here that are all bundled together. You undo those. This basically splits the connection, allows you to have two different ones right here. This one right here is fused for protection as well. So this one, just like the uh, original, clips right up here like that. This is the one that's gonna connect to the car. This is the one that connects to the wireless charger. We're gonna make that connection as well. Now we're gonna put our proximity sensor back, but in the original way it was orientated like this, now it's gonna be flat. Okay, so you take your T20, screw it in. Not all of you LCI guys, this is when you would use this adapter right here. That goes into cigarette lighter area right here because your cigarette lighters are much thinner than ours and it's a different housing. I don't think this plastic housing is there. So we're gonna feed our power cord through. We're just gonna push until it snaps in. Now that snapped in, we're going to connect this right here. Now we need to add our six metal clips. We're gonna pop these in where there's in these little areas. You, should, you can tell really easily where they are. There we go, we have our six tabs in. Now I've tried to bundle my wires in uh, between the cup holders and around this area right here. And now we're going to turn it around. Before we snap it in, we have to make sure that this connector is connected. Now we're gonna make sure that nothing is in the way. This little blue connector right here, make sure that, that feeds through. Now it's gonna feel like it's not supposed to go in, but all it takes is a little few hits here and there and she gets all snapped in now we got our t20s here and here now to put back in our mode switcher our trash control our parking assist I have cleaned this up put this connector in there we go snap that bad boy in there Putting the shift knob trim back on. Just snaps right in. Put our plug in. Flip of our console. And this one just snaps in. Just like that. Let's see if the rubber pieces fit. The one on the left sure does. The one on the right, ah, it's, a, it's tight. I don't think that's gonna fit. We might have to modify. Now cut the one on the right on the outer edge all the way around to see if it'll fit that way. And it does. So now what I need to do now is hook up the battery, which I'm not gonna show. That's, that's the easy part. Just do reverse what we did in the beginning. And then we're gonna see if this bad boy works. There we go. As you can see, the green light is lit up. We have my iPhone 13 Pro Max with a Simply Carbon Fiber case on it. Let's see if it works. It's charging. iPhone 13 Pro Max fits snug. A little bit of lee room if you were to get a bulkier case, it would probably fit. Androids, there may be some huge note foldables. I don't know if they'll fit in here or not. Now let's go in for a closer look and let's put the iPhone in the opposite direction. And there it is. You can see it's charging. That is pretty cool. Like I said, in these cars without getting a mount here, there's a screw on mount that goes in here. F80 has a nice video on that one. Go check that out. There's one that people put behind that trim piece there. People connect into the vents, suction cup them to the window. But if you're just looking to charge your phone and you don't need it for navigation because maybe you've retrofitted CarPlay like I have, you don't need uh, to see the screen unless you're looking at Tomb. I use a separate phone for that. Here is my 11 Pro Max with a much larger case. It's more snug of a fit, but you see it's charging. Well, we get to test the JD Cars Lightning console on the way back. It is now charging. It is gonna be running CarPlay, Google Maps, uh, Spotify, all this stuff, so it's not going to charge completely fast. It's not, it shouldn't with all that much stuff, but we'll see how warm it is. That was a big question. We'll let you know when we get home.
All right, so we made it home. We did the entire three and a half drive. Like I said, I had Waze, CarPlay, Spotify. Yeah, we're at 80% now. We left at 40%. I was at Fud Records for 45 minutes playing videos and playing around before we went back on the road. To me, that's normal because Waze drains the battery like crazy. It, my regular charger in the car barely keeps up. It's only warm to the touch, and Waze does that by itself. I don't see any issue with this creating heat like some people have asked. The um, If you put magnets here for uh, mounts and stuff, I've heard that putting magnets between that and a wireless charger can cause heat is actually a warning down there on the console for that. All plug and play as well. So this, and it's all plug and, and this, oh my God, I'm, I'm creating shadows. This completely changes this it's just a really great it's just a really great oh my gosh it's just a really great oh my god it's so great i can't talk i can't see freaking cameras in the way so when you pull it up so when you pull it up so when you pull it First thing you want to do is lift up your middle con. So for this little blue wire, so for this blue little winder, you can take your. Uh, so for this little blue right here, so for this blue right, right, oh my gosh. So you have a bunch of wire. So there's a, oh my gosh. There'll be a coat.